All right, and good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning, October the 11th, 2020. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to everybody watching online through Facebook. And I believe we only have Clarence and Edith on the Zoom call. So good morning to the Mints this morning. And hello to everybody in the congregation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Joey. And good morning to everyone else. And uh, good to see each one of you here. We are uh, glad to be back in uh, God's house this morning. Uh, socially distanced and spread out and wearing masks and uh, just to let everybody know that while, while I'm talking here from the mic I'll I'll have my mask off but when I sing I'll have my mask on uh, hopefully that'll muffle me a, a little bit uh, but uh, anyway we're uh, trying to make the best of a difficult situation today and thank you all for for joining us today uh, I was just sitting here listening to Pat and Cherry play and and, and I just want to tell you that I uh, y'all are y'all are the best musicians we have here this morning <laughs> I just and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate y'all and how much I enjoy listening to y'all play it uh, you know it, it's it's difficult to get up here every Sunday and uh, say something unique so uh, but uh, I, I, th I think uh, Pat and Sherry and Joey and everyone involved in church know how much we appreciate y'all couldn't do it without you uh, I uh, let's see is there any other thing I, I guess that's that's about it so uh, we're going to uh, continue on. We are going to try to sing a couple of hymns this morning. Uh, I think Laura's going to sing for us. If Pat, if you twist her arm, I think she's going to sing. Okay, and then we're going to try to sing a couple of, uh, of songs uh, that, that everyone knows uh, out of the hymnal. So uh, we're going we're to do our best to see how that goes this morning be interesting to sing in the mass on, but we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, one thing that I do know is God can hear us loud and clear. That's, that, that's for sure. So if you would, I always like to open up our services with a word of prayer. Let's, let's all bow our heads. Um, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house here today. Lord, we ask God. Uh, you to bless our time here, Lord. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit with us. Lord, uh, may we all uh, worship you in spirit and in truth today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we, uh, we will have our charge conference next Sunday. Uh, all the reports are done and completed. Uh, Jerry has them and is going to turn them in next Sunday, Rainbow City, uh, First Time Methodist Church. Normally, I would encourage everyone who would like to come to come. But uh, in light of all the circumstances, I don't know that that's the greatest idea in the world. It's just a formality uh, for us, but it is a, an important aspect of the church doing some business and and it is, will be a, a worship environment, but that's going to take place uh, next Sunday. And, uh, and just on, on behalf of uh, my family, uh, I would like to say thank you to the church for your vote of confidence. And uh, I understand that the pastor's salary will be raised uh, next year, starting in January. So uh, thank you very much for your faithfulness and your generosity and your vote of confidence uh, for me. We, uh, we appreciate that uh, very kind gesture. So thank you all very much. And thank you to all the officers of the church who stepped up last week to uh, provide leadership for the church for the coming year. Uh, just, uh, uh, just so thankful that we have a, a spirit of, of service here. Uh, of, uh, giving back to God's kingdom. Thank you all for doing that. So uh, 
Uh, at this time, uh, I guess everybody's still unmuted, Joey? Uh, it's just still this clear. So okay. Okay. Uh, it, 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 we, uh, I will pray a, a little bit later before the sermon, but uh, while we have everybody who's not muted or whatever, uh, just want to go over our prayer requests. And uh, the ones we had listed from Thursday night, uh, we have Stan Phillips, Tammy Gidley and Mariah, uh, Anna Adams, Linda Farley, Terry John Calhoun, Billy Phillips, Sandy Darnell, Max Little, Katie Bailey, Madge Robinson, Jeff Blackwood, Helen Mitchell, Harold Potter, J.L. McClellan, and Judy, who's on vacation. And of course, the storm victims, uh, that have been affected uh, by this latest hurricane and the previous storms. Uh, are there any other uh, names that we need to, to list today or mention? Carl McGowan, MCGOT, Carl McGowan, 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 Carl First name? Carl. Carl, so. I'm not a very good transcriptionist. <laughs> Any others? Joe and Mary Jane on their travels this week. Okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> Any others? Oh, I'm sorry. Keep oh, absolutely. Okay. All right, John, thank you. We started a new list on, on, on Wednesday, on Thursday night. Okay, and I'm certain that we have unspoken prayer requests that we'll, we'll lift those up uh, as well a little bit later. Okay, uh, I guess, is that it? Any other announcements, prayer requests? Okay. All righty. Well, we're going to turn to the music. Laura, you want to sing first? Kick us off? Uh, can we sing something else first so I can Sure. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. If, you, if everyone will turn in their red Methodist hymnals to number 364. <clears throat> now, I think Laura's going to sing 367, so you'll be close to that. 364. Boy, this is, it's been a long time since we've done this, Pat. You pray for me. Yeah, thank you. I need you. All right, we're we're gonna we're gonna warm up good and sing all three verses. Number three sixty four. Because he lives.
one more? Yeah, okay. Do I have to keep my mouth? Mask on? No. No. Baby. I have to keep it out of my mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 we need you to come here so it'll go through. I'm sorry, what? You need to come up here and use this mic. Okay. Pat, are you going to do that? Turn the phone out of that phone for me. Doesn't help that there's dog hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing wearing a mask? <laughs> there's dog hair everywhere in my house. <laughs> song. Thank you, Laura, for sharing that with us. Have you ever been touched? You know, I, I feel like uh, God blesses me every day. And it's just, uh, it, it doesn't it cease to amaze me how, how God can watch over somebody like me. And, and you, you might say, well, you know, a preacher, you know, he's, he's supposed to look after you. Well, you know, God look, looks after everybody. And uh, he, uh, I, I just feel really uh, fortunate uh, to be able to stand before you today and, and share that. Okay, if you would just in your hymnals, you can turn over to 369. 369. We're going to sing Blessed Assurance, and we'll sing all three verses.
Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. For that, I uh, I would do. Let's see. Got my homemade bulletin here. Uh, I just want to tell you, it ain't easy to sing with a mask on, <laughs> especially for somebody who doesn't know what he's doing. <clears throat> Uh, I would invite you all to uh, turn in your Methodist hymnals, unless you know it, uh, number 881. We're going to affirm our faith, uh, reciting what we believe. Uh, number 881, the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to um, say a prayer over the offering, uh, and then Pat and Sherry will play uh, a selection and then we'll uh, rise for uh, the benediction of the offering. Uh, and just want to let everybody know we've got an offering plate down here, and we've got an offering plate at the back door. You don't have to get up now. If you, uh, if you want to drop something in on your way out, that's fine. Uh, that was uh, the reason for that, or if it, you may be uh, still mailing it in or whatever, and that's fine too. So just want to let everybody know that. So if you would, let's, let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good and perfect gifts that come our way. We thank you for providing all that we need. Lord, at this time, I ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you all uh, to join me uh, in a time of prayer. Uh, I think there'll be some music playing softly uh, while we pray, uh, and then I'll, I'll close us at the end uh, with the Lord's Prayer, and I invite you to join me in that at the end. If you would, let's bow our heads.
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we, your humble flock, come before you today thanking you and praising your name. Lord, today we, we lift up all of the names we mentioned earlier. Lord, we offer to you all the unspoken prayers that were acknowledged in the lifting of a hand. Lord, all the private prayers in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we humbly pray that your will be done. Lord, we ask you to forgive us where we have failed you in the days past. Lord, give us strength to do better in the days ahead. Lord, we ask a blessing upon all that are in attendance today, whether here physically or virtually, on the phone, on Facebook, or however how they are joining us today. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon them, their family, their neighbors, their friends, all that they do. Lord, we ask this blessing so that we might be better servants for you in the future. Lord, we thank you especially for your son Jesus who came and died a horrible death for our sins. Lord, we ask you to help us to be better followers of Jesus. Lord, help us to do what is right as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about being back in church. Now, it's not everybody. Uh, everybody aren't, isn't here today, but uh, it's, I'm just going to go out there and say it's a good start. Uh, it's uh, singing, singing out of the hymnal is, uh, boy, it's special me I missed it and, and I'm, I'm thankful to be able to do that today uh, what, what a great day it is and um, feel a little bit of fall in the air it's gonna be warm today but uh, see the leaves falling and uh, you can tell that uh, cooler days are ahead uh, I want to share a, a couple of, of jokes with you and those of you who know me know that I am not a comedian. I, uh, and I will probably mess these jokes up even though I'm going to read them. Given a, a punchline is not my gift. I can tell you that. And I will give credit to my buddy Steve Backus. Every Friday he uh, posts corny jokes of the week. Uh, and I'm sure he probably uses these in his sermons too. The first one says, uh, it's a question. 
what lights up a soccer stadium? The answer is a soccer match. Next question is, why should you not write with a broken pencil? Anybody got an idea? It's easy because it's pointless. Okay, so I got a couple of chuckles there, but yeah, I mean, I mean, no amens on that. That's it. I, I, they're kind of, kind of cute. I thought but, uh, it. Uh, I tell you, the the comedy that you get these days, those are those are good jokes. I tell you. Uh, I want to. Uh, I'm going to be reading from Romans and from the Gospel of John, and uh, I'm going to all all the passages you're very familiar with, and uh, uh, the title of today's message is hypocrisy has no bounds and if you're a fan of the movie tombstone you know where that line comes from it's a, a line that doc holiday tells to wyatt earp uh, and it's just something that always is stuck with me but be, uh, before we get into the sermon, I, I wanted to read a couple passages of Scripture uh, from, from Romans. Uh, uh, first, I'm going to read 3.23 and then 6.23. I think everybody probably knows what they are. But in Romans chapter 3, starting verse 22 through 24, says this. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Now that's a good one. That's uh, one you hear quoted all the time. And uh, I want to move over to Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 19, Romans 6, verse 19, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says this. He says, I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves, just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Well, just, just wanted to kind of set the, set the basis for our message today. And that's very simply, and I think, unless, well, I think you would all agree with me that we're all sinners. All of us. We're all sinners. Even if it's been a while since you've committed a sin, we're all sinners. So I think we all agree with that. I don't know that anybody's going to raise a big disagreement with that. We're all sinners. Nothing that uh, we're proud of. Uh, I remember 
John Kroll's son-in-law came to Christ Central Church one day and he was talking about titles. You know, a lot of things are, are, are labeled by your profession, by what you do. Just for us here this morning, I'm the preacher. We have an organist and a pianist and an IT professional in the back. We have soloists and we have congregational singers here today. But I remember John David Phillips get up in church and say that uh, he was a lot of things. You know, he, I think at the time he was working at the ranch, he was Reagan Kroll's husband. There was a lot of different things that he could be called, but uh, his message was, and I recall it to this day, he says very simply, what I am is I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I hope that we can all say that here today. If you can't, you need to come see me. But we're all sinners. So getting back to uh, the title of our message, Hypocrisy Knows No Bounds. Well, the definition of hypocrisy is pretending or faking to be what one is not or believe that one does not. Behavior that contradicts what one claims to believe or feel. I think we all kind of understand uh, what it is to be a hypocrite. And this is especially true of the false assumption of an appearance of virtue or religion. And I would go as far as to say righteousness. So now that we understand that a little bit more maybe, Back in the tombstone days, from the movies, calling someone a liar was a slap in the face and usually ended up in a, as a duel in the streets in a gunfight, resulting most likely in death. In high school 40 years ago, calling someone a liar was a terrible thing and usually it resulted in a fist fight. That's kind of how we settled things back in the day. Harry, you remember those days. You know, I look back on television just five years ago. It was, I, I can remember seeing things start to change Calling someone a liar on TV, it just really didn't happen. There was this gentleman's agreement that it wouldn't be done. You might accuse somebody of a lot of things like stretching the truth or having your own opinion about something, but you didn't use the word liar describing somebody. And then all of a sudden that went away. And I, I just want to say from my standpoint, uh, it's sad, really. This downward spiral that we've all been in, ending where we are today. And I'm not just talking about politics. It's really about anything. I mean, you can go in a lot of churches these days, and there's a lot of hollering and screaming and fighting and name calling and it's sad and uh, and I just want to say going back to last Sunday I sat out in the car while, while the church had the little meeting and uh, voted on several uh, topics the meeting was over in 15 minutes I believe that's the record uh, for a United Methodist meeting in the history of the church that any meeting could be resolved in 15 minutes. It's, uh, but I commend you for that, for having a, a spirit of 
cooperation. I'm hearing things that I never thought that I would hear, even in the church. And I think we should all take a step back, take caution in our tone, choose our words carefully, think before we speak. We should all remember that no one here on earth now is perfect. And we all know that there's only been one perfect human, and that was Jesus. None of us are perfect. Now I want to go back in the Bible to John chapter 8. I think you're all familiar with this story. We're going to read verses 1 through 11, John chapter 8. And the scripture says this, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him and sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery that made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him but Jesus went down and started to write, bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, if any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote in the ground. At this, those who, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until, the only, until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Thanks be to God. Now the, uh, this chapter starts right at the end of another story where they were trying to plot against Jesus. And it starts out in verse 1. It says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Uh, has anyone been to Jerusalem here? I haven't either. I'd like to go one day just to see what we've all been reading about all of our lives. But the Mount of Olives was due east of Jerusalem. And in elevation, it's about 200 feet above the city. So from the Mount of Olives is a good view of the entire city from there. So Jesus went to spend the night, and the next morning, Jesus appeared and he began to teach. And this is where the teachers of the law brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group. Now some people think uh, that this was an attempt to embarrass this woman. Some people think she may have not had clothes on. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. I don't know for sure. But nonetheless, it was about humiliating her. And verse 4, and they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Definitely a bad thing. We can all agree with that. But let's look at this a little bit deeper. Um, unless I'm just grossly mistaken, it takes two to commit adultery. But for some reason, they only brought the woman in. 
That tells you a little something right there. <clears throat> so where was the man? I'm not condoning what she may or may not have done. All likelihood, she was guilty. But there really should have been a better way of addressing this sin. Almost seems, seems to me like a scene from a Wild West movie. It just, just doesn't seem right that people would act like this let alone religious leaders, leaders in the church, brought this woman before Jesus. And they said, and the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Well, what do you say? And it goes on to tell us they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. He writes, he bends over and begins to write in the sand. So here's the dilemma. If Jesus agreed with the church leaders that he would be in opposition to Roman law, which did not allow Jews to carry out capital punishment. If Jesus did not agree with the church leaders, then he would be theoretically in, oppos in opposition to the law of Moses, the Old Testament. So Jesus is in a uh, no win situation here. These uh, crafty church leaders think they've got him. They were setting the trap, they thought. And, and, I, and I have to say something about the finger writing in the sand. I don't know about you, but it just drives me nuts that they didn't tell us what he wrote. One of the great mysteries of the Bible. Everybody wants to know. But nobody knows. He wrote something. We can only speculate. What do you think he wrote? Anybody? And it's okay to answer. Could be. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that, that could be it. I don't know about you, but I would have hated to have been one of those church leaders with a rock in my hand. Standing there before Jesus. Because, you know, just like you and I, and mainly I say me, just like we're all sinners here today, all those folks were sinners there too. They might have been walking around in their fancy church clothes with the boxes on their heads and their robes and their tassels and all of that. But down deep, they were human and they were sinners just like us. When they went on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. Well, I don't know about you, but that just, that just makes my heart stop. As usual, Jesus turned the tables on them. I wish it was a movie where I could see the looks on their faces when they heard Jesus say that. I imagine their faces turn white because they knew that they'd been had. Scripture goes on to say, again, he stooped down 
and wrote on the ground. Again, more mystery. Continues. Verse 9 says, This, those who heard, began to go away one at a time, the old one first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Boy, that scene, it just, it, it's so vivid in my mind. Here's Jesus and this prostitute, this woman caught in adultery. We, we all believe that she was guilty. More than likely, she was. I can see the faces of those Jewish leaders. The horror on their faces, their rocks drops from their hands, their heads hung low, looking down, ashamed. They walk away in complete and total embarrassment. Folks, in this story, we have just witnessed the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, firsthand. Now, I, I would imagine that our stories aren't nearly as dramatic as this. But I think if we're all honest with ourselves, we've all experienced the grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus straightened her up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She answered, No one, sir. And Jesus declared, Then neither do I condemn you. Now go and leave your life of sin. Many translations say, Go and sin no more. Now I don't think that Jesus actually meant that she would never commit a sin for the rest of her life. But you get the idea. Turn away from that life of sin. Notice that Jesus did not condemn the sinful acts of the woman. Also, he did not condone the sinful acts of the woman. He gave her a second chance at life because I think it was the very intention that they stone her that day and kill her. Jesus gave her a chance at eternal life. Over the years, the church has received its fair share of criticism regarding being full of hypocrites. But I can think of no better place for, for a hypocrite to be than in church. We must be careful as the church to be cautious with our words, cautious with our tone, even more cautious with our actions. Because people are watching and people are listening. It is human nature for us to want to point fingers at others and even want to throw stones at those who we declare guilty. But we all must be willing to look at our own actions in the mirror. For us to throw a stone, we must first be without sin ourselves. And if we're honest, none of us are. We need less finger pointing, less jump, jumping to judgment, less rock throwing. We need more Jesus in our lives. For the last several weeks, we talked about what America needs. Last week, we talked about America needing the good news of the gospel. And today, I want to declare that we need more Jesus in our lives. And I hope Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, that he's leading you to a life of righteousness and away from hypocrisy and condemnation and sin. Now, we all fall short, but God is there to hear our confessions and get us back on the right track.
Maybe you need that today. As Pat and Sherry come to play our closing hymn, uh, I invite you to uh, pray with me and let's search our hearts. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this story of Jesus straightening out the leaders of the church. It's a story 2,000 years later is very appropriate to each one of us. Lord, I ask you to help us to do what is right, to live a righteous life, and remove all hypocrisy from our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
officially, even though it's just a formality. Uh, we're, we're grateful to have you on and all and have been grateful to have you part of this church and looking forward to the future. So if you would, I'd like to pray for you and uh, this will be our benediction. Let's not this. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for John and his life. And Lord, I ask a blessing on him, his family. Lord, I ask you to watch over him as he travels all over this country. And Lord, uh, we're looking forward to the day when he comes back home and he'll be here with us every Sunday. But until that day, we ask you to watch out for him. Leave God and protect him. And we're so thankful for, for him to be a part officially of our church family. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 Amen.